What's up guys? So today we're going to get into mass formation psychosis. What the heck is that? Uh, it's a group of words that I've never really heard put together before, except it's been put together or it's been uh, put forward by two incredibly highly qualified people. Uh, first is Robert Malone, MD. He's the inventor of nine uh, mRNA vaccines and he received his medical degree from the Northwestern Feinberg School of Medicine. He completed the Harvard Medical School uh, Fellowship as a global clinical research scholar in 2016 and was scientifically trained at the University of California, Davis, University Cal San Diego, and the Salk Institute Molecular Biology and Virology Laboratories. He has served as an assistant and associate professor of pathology and surgery at the University of California at Davis, the University of Maryland, and the Armed Forces University of the Health Sciences. For many years, his wife and him have built and run a, consultan a consultancy and analytics firm specializing in biotechnology and clinical trials development. So there is a page on his website where he posts the original data, notes, patents, early papers, lab notes, meeting notes, and patent disclosures uh, that he's been involved in. And it's an incredibly lengthy list. You can find that on his website. Just type in Robert Malone, MD, on Google. The second doctor that has put forward this mass formation psychosis hypothesis is Dr. Peter McCullough. He is a, he is a board-certified cardiologist, and he also has uh, an incredible amount of qualifications to be talking about uh, COVID. So quick background on both of these guys. They both appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast and discussed a lot of the problems that they've seen in why, why has the only solution to this COVID-19 pandemic been vaccines. Uh, they're big supporters of tr uh, different treatments and just different ways to, to come at the pandemic. And they're starting to question why global media is in lockstep supporting vaccines as the only uh, solution to this problem that we, we face. And so uh, back to Peter McCullough. Uh, so he has all sorts of different educational qualifications, but the one that we're going to focus on right now uh, for being able to talk about COVID, is, at least, is uh, he's a graduate uh, he, his graduate degree, Master's of Public Health in General Epidemiology from the University of Michigan School of Public Health. So I urge you to Google both of these guys, uh, go check out their podcasts on the Joe Rogan experience. But so they both mentioned that what they think is going on globally right now uh, is similar to what happened during World, World War II in Germany. You had an incredibly uh, educated populace that started to go batshit crazy. So how did this happen? What is mass formation psychosis? Let's get into it. So again, it's a strange group of words. We're going to tackle the definition and meaning right here. So mass formation is equivalent to crowd or group. So and psychosis is uh, an abnormal condition of the mind. So the total definition of mass formation psychosis would be as follows. The common people, or the populace, are afflicted with an abnormal condition of the mind, psychosis, that results in difficulties determining what is real and what is not real. Now, since early in the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which according to the World Health Organization kills only 0.23% of those infected, enormous fear and panic have been fueled by the hourly drumbeat of the one-voice global media. Now, an international process of editorial standardization has delivered unprecedented news coverage of the monopolized message. One, the pandemic threatens the survival of all humanity. This is not true. Two, there is no therapy to cure the sick. That is false. Uh, we've heard a lot about monoclonal antibodies and ivermectin and all sorts of different drugs that already exist that can be repurposed for early treatment of COVID-19. Three, it is necessary to confine the whole population. We saw this early on with the insistence on lockdowns, and we see this now with the bringing back of mask mandates uh, and also lockdowns. 
there's this stress that we all need to be in this together and that we need to be in lockstep agreement about how to tackle this. When in fact, that doesn't make sense because a one size fits all approach to, to this, uh, especially two years in where we have more data, we have more knowledge with how we can treat this, how we can prevent it. Um, I mean, people are vaccinated at this point. Uh, and you know, they've said that the vaccines were completely effective to treat or to prevent all COVID-19 variants. We've now seen that that's not true. You can get it even if you are vaccinated. Uh, however, a one size fits all approach to this pandemic, especially two years in with all the data that we have is not, is not the way to go about things. So four, uh, of the standardized news coverage, um, the delivery from this problem will only come from a vaccine, which we just discussed how that's, uh, it doesn't make any sense anymore. So four conditions. Th so this mass formation uh, psychosis idea was first presented by Dr. Matthias Desmond, who's a professor of psychology at the University of Ghent. So according to him, there's four conditions that need to be present to create a mass formation uh, psychosis. So the first, there needs to be a lot of socially isolated people or people who experience lack of a social bond. Now this is created through lockdowns, through masks, through social distancing. Literally they've put into place social distancing rules where you're supposed to stay six feet away from people at all time with a mask on. Nobody's socializing under those circumstances. Let's just be real. You all have experienced it. I've experienced it. We know that this is the case. Two, People who experience a lack of sense-making, unable to come to sensible conclusions. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So three, there is a lot of free-floating anxiety. Free-floating because there's nothing to connect their anxiety to. No focal point. Unable to identify what's causing and so no way to deal with it. Just look up on Google, Rise in Anxiety 2021. There's all sorts of articles put forth by like, places like The Economist, Time Magazine, like all of these big publications about how people are feeling a rise in anxiety. So that's, that's no secret. I think we've all heard about things like that over the course of the last two years. So four and finally, fourth condition that needs to be present to create a mass formation psychosis is there's also a lot of free floating psychological discontent. People may experience their daily lives as lacking any purpose or meaning. Now, what ushered us into this? It was that first two weeks lockdown, two weeks to slow the spread, right? That two weeks felt like two days. Like the, and I think people are experiencing this over the course of the last two years too. Time seems to be going by so fast and there's not much of a, of a grounding that we all have in, in the passing of, of time. It seems like the last two years has just been like one long month or something like that because of this strange cycle of lockdown, mask up, vaccine, li uh, lockdowns are lifted, you don't have to wear a mask anymore, and then a new variant comes out and then you just repeat the process. Uh, so we're living this strange cyclical existence where the passing of time feels different and that leads to a lot of this free-floating psychological discontent. So free floating, uh, it says in this article, free floating anxiety is the most painful psychological phenomena to experience and leads to panic attacks. In this state of unfocused anxiety, the mind tries to connect its anxiety to something, an object of anxiety. The next piece of the puzzle, uh, of the puzzle is a strategy to deal with this object of anxiety. So here, the media is presenting a narrative which provides the focal point for the anxiety, which is the pandemic, and also the people who won't listen to the orders uh, and get the vaccine. Um, and then the media also provides a strategy to deal with the object of anxiety so that there's no free-floating anxiety anymore. So you have this another strange cyclical existence where people are more anxious, people don't really know what to be anxious about, and then the media provides something to be anxious about, which is the pandemic and the people who are, quote unquote, like against them uh, and won't get vaccinated. And then you get into like the, the unvaccinated versus vaccinated dichotomy. And then the media provides the 
solution, which is to get vaccinated and like create this weird culture war against these like uh, people, these like unvaxxed people. Um, so, OK, so if a large segment of people are willing to follow this strategy to deal with this object of anxiety, then there's a second step where we start this collective and heroic battle with the object of anxiety, the pandemic or the unvaxxed. Uh, and in that way, a new kind of social bond emerges. And with that, a new kind of sense making or purpose. So people have a new purpose in life, which is this purpose in life is to be is to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. And anyone who's not on board with fighting against that pandemic is evil uh, or just not to be. Uh, it's like you become a social pariah. Uh, Robert Malone just got banned off of Twitter, which is crazy. Uh I'm not sure how you can be an inventor of the technology of the mRNA vaccine, which is what the COVID vaccines are from Johnson and Johnson, Moderna and Pfizer. I'm not sure how you can pioneer that technology and then get banned off of the number one communication platform in the world um, for raising questions about how public health officials are dealing with this pandemic. We won't get into that uh, too much. But I mean, I know what I think about it. And if you guys think something about it, comment below, message me, you know, let's talk about it. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Rebuilding these social connections off of something that's not the COVID-19 pandemic and this weird fight amongst ourselves between the unvaxxed and the vaxxed and, and all this nonsense. There's more to life than that. And, but that's the, that's what this mass formation psychosis is, is that they've, we've been trapped in a cyclical existence with this new purpose of life on both sides the unvaxxed it, it, it's this like fight against misinformation and global authoritarianism that's on the rise and then with the vaxxed it's this like lockstep fight against the unvaxxed and against the COVID-19 pandemic so uh, similar to hypnosis, people in this hyper-focused state are, narr are narrowly focused, which is completely true. All we focus about now is COVID-19. Uh, when people experience this mental intoxication, it no longer matters if the narrative is wrong or even blatantly false. Uh, the resistance to understanding the narrative is false or wrong is driven by the fear of returning to the state of free-floating anxiety. So people would rather have this object of anxiety than have anxiety with no object that's why people don't want to let go of the pandemic because there's nothing to place that free-floating anxiety on anymore if you take that narrative away so this explains why arguing based on facts will not work facts no longer matter to to this to to us anymore like the, the populace um mass formation is also similar to mass hypnosis in terms of people's willingness all right so this explains why arguing based on facts will not work. Facts no longer matter to us anymore because we're in this cyclical existence of a new purpose, um, which is the fight against COVID and uh, the fight against the fight between the vaxxed and the unvaxxed people. Uh, we're no longer able to come to sensible conclusions that are in our best interests. Uh, we're trapped in this mass hypnosis. So standard hypnosis is used in place of anesthesia during minor surgeries and the subjects experience no pain as they, as they are being cut into. In mass formation, people do not get egotistical at all. Rather, to the contrary, mass formation focuses the attention so much on one point, COVID-19, that you can take everything away from people, their ability to go to restaurants, their people to not, the, the ability to not wear something covering your face whenever you go out in public, the ability to socialize normally with people and not have to stay away, stay six feet away from every human being you encounter. Um, you can take away their physical well-being, locking people indoors, not allowing them to go to gyms, not allowing them to go to public parks, not allowing them to go to concerts, not allowing them to go to social gatherings with uh, above a certain number of people. Uh, their material well-being uh, the disruptions in the trade, uh, disruptions in the supply chain, um, you know, uh, what, what's it called? Inflation, economic inflation, 
um, and they won't even notice its absence because we're so focused on one thing, which is a pandemic and this like infighting between uh, our population. In mass formations, people become radically intolerant of dissident voices. This person threatens to wake the people up and they get angry when confronted by the initial anxiety and discontent they experience by challenges to the official doctrine. This explains why people who are extremely qualified to be criticizing uh, how the pandemic is being handled are being banned off of Twitter uh, and being, yeah. Okay, so the crowd direct all their aggression at dissident voices. At the same time, they are radically tolerant of their leaders who pronounce the mainstream narrative, people like Fauci. These people can lie and cheat and do everything they want and will always be forgiven by the crowd. Now, this goes to show why Fauci was able to lie about the NIH funding gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Virology Lab, and people didn't care at all, or people didn't even notice. Uh, all the lying, this is because all the lying, dishonesty, and misbehavior is seen by the crowd as doing it for their own safety. All right, so um, Robert, I just listened to the Joe Rogan Experience podcast with Robert Malone. He says there's ways to break out of this. Um, so number one, obviously we have to realize that this is going on. Uh, and we have to pr primarily like the, the essential thing that we need to do to get out of this is to talk to each other, to reemphasize community. And yeah, that's pretty much the main thing. Like we have to start talking to each other in person again and reemphasizing community and not the infighting has to stop. Like we have to come together again. So that's what we'll do because we're going to get out of this and it'll be all good. This has been a fourth star map. I'm Tyler. Like, follow, subscribe, do all that stuff. We got Spotify, we got YouTube, we got Instagram. Uh, send me a message. I'm down to discuss all this stuff. It's super cool. Uh, we need to communicate with each other again in person. Let's do it. God bless. Happy New Year. 2022, baby.